We'll now move on to our next speaker, Morali Krishnan, who is online. Uh, Morali is the co-founder and CPO of Rappel Inc. USA. He is passionate about enabling human skill development at scale and enjoys being at the intersection of technology, learning and training. Morali's mission today is to help organizations transform their skill development systems. He is a trusted advisor for early stage companies on technology, product and business models. He has developed Rappel, which is an intelligent workforce training platform trusted by global brands like Toyota, Shell, Casio, Maersk and others and helps organizations train their distributed workforce rapidly and produce measurable outcomes. Morali, will be, um, uh, Morali is online and uh, you can go ahead and begin uh, your, your speech, Morali. And also for those uh, guests who we have online, uh, please feel free to add any questions in the chat and uh, we will pick some of these questions out later. Thank you. Thank you for um, inviting me to this conference. My name is Murali Krishnan. First of all, good morning, everybody. And um, I'm calling from Seattle, Washington, where it is evening for me. I'm really excited to be here. Uh, to start off with, uh, thank you very much to His Excellency Dr. Bakit Ahmed al Maghri for uh, sponsoring and supporting this conference series. And I'm really excited about the opportunity where we get to talk about how organizations like yours, countries, organizations, companies, nonprofits, all could be focused upon investing in the future skill development. So with that, let me get started. Uh, I do need a access permission to share my screen, please. So while that comes up, uh, the previous uh, person, uh, Ms. Zajali, spoke about um, hiring people and how novel technologies like artificial intelligence can be applied towards hiring uh, people to the organization. And that's very important. And my topic builds on that as a compliment as well. And you'll hear about that in a few minutes. While it comes up, let me just introduce myself. So as I mentioned earlier, I live in Seattle, Washington in the Northwest corner of the United States. I have been here for almost 27 years, more than half of my life. And um, I came here originally to work for uh, Microsoft uh, Corporation, one of the you know, fledgling software companies, but now a global leader in building software. I was fortunate to work with um, various people building software and software teams globally uh, for different markets. Subsequently, I had an opportunity to work at a few startup companies in the early stage development of big data systems and artificial intelligence technologies, which led me to also spend a couple of years at a Starbucks coffee company, another global company you know, focused upon consumer market. And in all these uh, opportunities that I had, I had the pleasure of also not only hiring uh, you know, hundreds and hundreds of software engineers, product engineers, product managers, but also training and engaging them in their work. And that's something that I learned and that built on that in the current venture, uh, which you call RAPL, which stands for Rapid Learning. You know, when I ask you the question and I meet with uh, business leaders and individuals in the companies, I ask this question all the time, what is most important for your business? You know, this is a, a hard one to have in a Zoom session. Allow me to kind of continue to fill in the gap here. You know, when you start answering this question quite often, quickly, people get to this most important thing that they care about, which is every business cares about growth. Now, nobody likes to be a stassy uh, in a complacent place. They all want to have their seeds, ideas germinate, you know, be a root, bring up some leaves, flower and provide some fruits at the end of it. So growth is very vital. Now, when you think about growth, you know, certainly immediately as an engineer, as a business person, you can start asking the question, what are some barriers for growth? You know, very simple answer would be, I don't have enough capital. That's possibly true. And when you solve the capital problem, you know, soon I don't have enough customers. Well, you know how to go after and get customers. And the customers, of course, demand different set of uh, services and products, and so which leads to I need to have products. And from there, 
quickly you find out in order to produce high quality products, high quality services, you need people. That's not just sufficient. We particularly need skilled people in the organizations who care about the product, the quality, the customers, and hence help growing the business. That's very vital. I mean, step a step back and ask this question, why do we care about skilled people? In particularly in the 21st century, when the world has you know, almost nearing 8 billion people in population, every leader, every enterprise, every organization, every ministry, every nonprofit always says that they are looking for skilled people. And our previous speaker spoke about how we could improve the opportunity to hire skilled people. Now, part of the reason is, you know, some of you probably had heard this, the wave of great resignation, you know, post COVID, this has been a huge uh, challenge. You know, several people have been choosing different line of jobs for themselves, careers are changing, and that leaves a gap in the employability. Customer expectations are changing worldwide. You know, today I want to buy a simple car, or oh, maybe not a simple car, I want to buy a SUV. No, I don't want to buy an SUV. I want to buy an electric SUV. Oh, and there are these needs and demands are changing. The technology revolution has been phenomenal in the last 100, 200 years. Along with this revolution comes growing complexity, which means we need to learn a lot about many things. And a company, an individual, need to be equipped with those skills. That's very critical. The new generation workforce coming into the market have a very different model of engaging and working in their enterprises. They are not anymore tethered to their desks or their factories, things are changing. They want to work in a more modern way. And last but not least, there is continuous turnover of people from one job to another job, one industry to another industry as well. So all of these put tremendous pressure on having to develop skilled people. So what can we do about this problem? Well, one of the simplest answers is, okay, I'm gonna automate. This promise of technology applies to my industry, my line of business. I'm going to buy these beautiful new machines, you know, be it robotics, something similarly functions like robotics, and I'll automate. Well, that's possible. In order to automate, you, every business needs highly skilled labor to create these automation machines and to configure and run those machines without failure. We could rebalance the resources, move from one department to another department, one location to another location. These have been tried many times. Furthermore, I want to outsource more, as well as recruit additional new people. Recruiting is not easy either. Finding skilled people takes a lot of skill as well. That said, you know, these are all very standard mechanisms that companies attempt and do that all the time, and very important steps, no disagreement. In addition, we can do more. We can train people. Every enterprise has today people in their company who have been hired in the best possible manner into the company. That said, technology change, customers change, expectations are changing. Now it's very important to allow and support these individuals to train. This applies to the companies, this applies at a country level, training the citizens with new skills that they're ready for the next generation of work in front of them is very important as well. Now, when you think about training people, Soon you're confronted with this massive problem, a challenge. And we, I mean, both personally, myself and my company has been working with uh, hundreds of businesses worldwide. And when you talk to business leaders, the CEOs, the chief revenue officers, sales officers, operations officers, you know, HR officers, learning and development officers, everybody has a big list of skills that they expect from their own employees or future hires. And we kind of put them together, you know, we quickly arrive at certain common themes across these different skills and knowledge that people need to be familiar with. You know, particularly the digital revolution, you can talk about digital skills, knowing about cloud, data, analytics, security and privacy, automation, robotic process automation, Ma many different things come into play there. And we broadly classify them as digital skills. It ranges anywhere from being able to configure, manage, acquire these uh, digital assets, as well as create these digital assets as appropriate. 
you know, closely enough industry 4.0, web 3.0, many technologies are emerging. There is an alphabet soup of technologies that one could acquire, one could put to use and develop. And all of these also require skilled talent to help you. You know, not just these, what I call hard, hard areas, there are also soft skills, very, very critical for a team of people to work together, understanding emotionally, how am I ready to participate in the workforce? How can I collaborate with other people in the workforce, be it inside the company or outside the company, and assume leadership at the needed hour is very critical. And you step from that pillar, the next column that you see is blue color column is really any hire that we bring into the company, we wanna train them, educate them, engage them about the strategy, the values, the product knowledge, and the business processes and standard operating procedures. And often companies have these long manuals. You know, sometimes you can measure them in inches of thickness or centimeters of thickness. And guess what? These employee handbooks are very outdated. People don't read them. It's possible the HR department likes to produce them. The managers and leaders would like to have one and maybe the regulations require them. Unfortunately, people don't necessarily read all of them. So we need to be um, giving them a different solution model. Third pillar. Okay, I got employees in, I got their soft skills, hard skills. Now I need to know, help them understand about the market. Market is changing. The competition is changing. The, every car company in the world is trying to figure out what business am I in? Am I in the car business? Am I in the service business? Am I in the automation business? Am I in the electric vehicle business? And competition is driving them to rethink their priorities and how should they position the car to be sold, how to promote them, how to engage with customers the likes of and last but not least, you know, elements, uh, areas of culture, diversity, equity, all of these are very important. So hundreds and hundreds of skills and none of these are one size fit all. The culture for company one, the Oman Petroleum and Gas was very different from the culture for how Casio is gonna operate its retail stores. So it's actually very specific to the company that's very important. That's where we focus upon. We're not focused upon what a, a university or a school is training people that those are very, very fundamental foundational skills but we build on top of that. So think from a perspective of the employee or the trainee, they have a lot to learn. We just talked about the centimeters of thickness of manuals and books. And particularly not just reading them, it's about gaining mastery that's very important. And from a leader perspective, it's really about how do I engage and train my distributed workforce, often it's distributed now, you know, because of business reasons or because of you know, reasons like COVID, people are distributed. And so how do I do that? And how do I gain visibility and insights from the situation? That's very critical as well from a leader's perspective. I mentioned this earlier, the landscape and training has changed, you know, much like what we are doing, we're learning from each other, sometimes on a Zoom session, sometimes people showing up in place, you know, in person. So the model of you know, being in person all the time is not gonna scale and work very well. And these inches and centimeters thick manuals are not anymore going to work with the employees. They need something more engaging and fun to work with. Some companies have adopted and have been thriving. And you know, you heard about the companies that we work with, like Toyota, Maersk, uh, Casio. Recently, we started working with a company in Dubai. And most of you probably heard of them, MR Properties. Uh, one of the largest uh, companies there, and we're very happy to have them as a customer and we've been helping them. So they're all investing in adaptive and personalized mobile training. And in that model, training can happen at any place at any time. And thanks to the mobile revolution, these companies can train their employees and engage them worldwide using a mobile phone experience that's tailored and made simple for them. But Apple as a company, is a fairly new company. We've been around for three years. We've had background in education and training for the last uh, decade and a half. Uh, myself, my co-founder, we've been invested in this space for quite a long time. And so we have presence in many different um, parts of the world and a few really big customers that we are very happy and thankful to work with them because we enjoy working with customers who are investing in their employees, in their workforce and helping them train the skills. Hence help them solve their business problems to grow. Right. Rappel has been adopted by more than 100,000 users, and we have uh, also enabled it uh, in many different languages, including uh, Arabic, uh, because we have customers in, in that region as well. You know, Arabic, Thai, Chinese, you know, uh, Spanish, English, and then India happens to be a hotbed of many languages. We enable that multiple languages for India as well. 
So what is inside wrap? Uh, if you can just wrap up in the next couple of minutes, uh, time is short. Thank you. We'll do that. Uh, almost there. So I mean, Rappel, as I mentioned earlier, is a personalized bite-sized learning system. It uses AI insight to tailor a personal queue of learning for individuals and you know, delivered on a mobile phone experience that provides uh, detailed insights for the leaders. Uh, and the last but not least, we've added gamification, which is very much in tune with the uh, in a current um, population, which allows for the employees and leaders to learn about how many points they're gathering and hence create a fun uh, model for them to participate. At a high level, you know, we take content from enterprises, their private content, we rappelize them, turn them into micro topics. Each one is about three to five minute deliverable that can be delivered through the Rappel application, which leads to an engaged learning experience for learners and leads them towards mastery. We also provide insights, what we call Rappel Pulse, that provides a detailed insight about how many users are engaged, how many topics have they mastered, and what sort of a learning index, which is a compound index about how well the company is doing against its target. We are able to provide that insight, which helps them to nudge and get the uh, workforce to train very adaptively and quickly. So we do all of these with companies in a very short period of time. I mentioned earlier we were working with uh, the, the region MR, and we went live with them about uh, five weeks back, and they've been able to ramp up from about thousand users to about uh, close to about five thousand users in a matter of uh, three to five weeks. And they're adding more topics, and more people are actually learning on the go as well. And we're very really excited to support them and help them grow. Last is you know I'm here to. Uh, more importantly, you know, engage and inform you, train your existing workforce. You have a ton of people in your organizations that you need to support besides hiring people, train them. And as part of that, you would get growth. And if applicable, we are very happy to help you to get started now. You can reach me at uh, Murali at getrapple.com. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Morali. It's uh, nice to know about these engaging and interactive um, training opportunities, which maybe if you're a HR manager or in learning and development, uh, to have these kind of bite-sized, short training uh, sessions, um, training platforms for your organizations. Um, it would be good to chat with Mr. Morali. And uh, please, if you have any questions, if you can write them down, we'll ask them later on in the uh, Q&A.